everybody, it's Romania Black, and we're on episode 58 of Monster, and oh, no big deal, uh, Lungi is just having the time of his life <laughs> interviewing everybody, and shows up at Lipsky's door, and we find out that Lipsky is the son of Bonaparte, so is he... Is he Johan and Nina's brother? Is he a half-brother? Is he a full brother? Are they even related? We don't have confirmation that Bonaparte is the father of Johan and Nina, though it seems pretty obvious that he is at this point. What do we do with this? Is Bonaparte the father of all the Kinderheim children? <laughs> no, we don't know. Um, but uh, last episode we talked about how uh, episode 57 was like the end of act three, the end of the twist act and what a twist to end on. And now this episode is officially starting us, if we're going by the traditional Japanese four act structure, this episode is starting us into act four, which is building to the climax. If you can believe it, we're in the last fourth of the series. It's, it's mind boggling. <laughs> Boggling, right? Oh my god. So yes, I'm really excited about this episode. Um, I had some notes and I was not feeling well earlier this week. I feel a lot better now. I feel fine. Um, but earlier this week I was a little under the weather and I was at work and I had my notes that I was taking on, on Monster and I left those notes at my office. <laughs> so um, if I had any comments for Monster, I've left them there. So I may have some comments that I have to backtrack next episode for. And talk about then um, but I will definitely do that next week so don't worry <laughs> but yeah I'm really excited about this episode I'm excited to find out more about Lipsky I hope we get some backstories Lipsky Lunge is like our exposition like magnet Lunge is like I'm gonna get down to it figure out what's going on uh, anytime Lunge appears on screen now I get really excited because I'm like Lunge ain't messing around Lunge's like got on a mission to find information and at this point we know that Tenma's out to get Johan we're like we know that we've known that the last 40 episodes but with Lunge he's like trying to discover the mystery of the series and I'm all for that so anytime Lunge appears on screen now I'm like Yay, good. Although Dieter and Nina have run off, Johan's burnt down the Red Rose Mansion and seemingly has gotten rid of his persona of being Anna. So now what do we do with that? And Tinma is, you know, trying to find out what's going on. Wolf's just died. So there's a lot of mystery left to go. And I'm super excited to see what's going to happen. I need to probably think about starting to get a volume seven. I don't know. That's the one volume you can see on the back shelf there. We've gone up to volume six. I went ahead and ordered volumes eight and nine to have them ready. <laughs> and then volume seven, uh, I couldn't find. So I'm going to have to go on a hunt just to try to find volume seven. That one may be a little bit of a trick to find. But then I'll have the whole little shelf down there right under Banana Fish for Monster. So that's exciting, right? But um, the only thing I can remember, I think I'm going to try, like I said, next week I'll have more with my comments. But the only thing I can remember is someone, and I'll, I'll be able to tell you next week, someone was pointing out how the story about, it might have been Alex Johnson that pointed this out. I'll have to double check. But was pointing out how the story of the man with the big mouth and the man with the big eyes, the moral of that children's story was basically that, you know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. The only one that comes out with anything positive is the devil. So the children's story is saying if you're a devil, then you won't be taken advantage of. Which, if you're trying to brainwash little kids into thinking something like that, that's a pretty effective way to do it. Very subtly and very effectively. So yeah, that's crazy, right? But thank you, Alex, for giving that comment. I will double check next week and see what other comments I have uh, when we get to episode 59. But... With that being said, I want to give a big shout out over to Patreon for helping me to find these manga, to get them to talk to you all about them in the videos. I really appreciate it. We've got some new patrons on the philanthropy tier that I wanted to call out and give a shout out to because they um, have helped me to help uh, keep this channel going and to keep supporting me and what I love to do, which is talk to you guys about series like Monster. So a big shout out to Alex Cornejo, to Anime Annie, to Ash Gots No Bitches, to Anna, to Be Happy, to Dana, to Destiny Marie, to Edgar, to Eric, to Kiri, to Loisage, to Matthew Palfinier, to Nameless Monster, as well as to Shimoyama, Sunspots, Trails, Translucent Men, Tyrone Tyrone, Zachiel, Brian, and Lyndon. Thank you guys so much. I super appreciate it. All of my love. So yeah, I'm ready to find out. Um, hopefully my dogs will be nice and quiet. Probably not. <laughs> but uh, we'll just, I got my coffee ready. I'm excited. 
at this point in the story, I have no clue what Monster is going to give us each week. So every week is a surprise and I get really excited to see where the story's going. So we're going to find out what's going to happen in Monster episode 58. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one. Turn my sound up and let's go. a monster huh <laughs> wow <laughs> you would think we're in, we're on episode 58 you would think 58 episodes into a series when you're about to enter the final act that that Urasawa would not give you a brand new character and make you instantly connect with them and it's like no he's going to <laughs> here I was being like I think Eva went off with Grimmer no it was a different blonde we've had so many blonde guys in this series there's Sook there's Lipsky there's Grimmer there's Becker there's so many blondes in this series it's about as bad as Attack on Titan but yeah I just like there's so many blondes and now we have Martin include which I really like Martin's character Martin is really cool I like Martin a lot and I was like really wanting to ship him and Eva but I'm like what's happening so yeah so it was Martin that took Eva um and the baby is connected another blonde his hair's grown back um this series there and oh uh, they this series it can be so the mystery of it can be so frustrating because last episode we literally ended with Lunge talking to Lipsky being like, want to give us the secrets? And Lipsky's like, I guess I'm going to spill the secrets. And so you start this episode being like, well, we're going to find out about the secrets. No, we're going to go off to something that you forgot about from like five episodes ago, touch back on that. And then maybe who, oh my God. Mm. So we need a damn timeline is what we need to do. And here's my problem is that this series intentionally is messing with the timeline to make you go, to make you not know when certain things happen, right? So as far as the timeline, I guess we need to have, um, we need to have, oh my goodness. <laughs> my poor cute is getting a little freaky here. So I guess right here, we're just gonna put it right here because it seems uh, legit. Is it the red, red rose? mansion burned so we had the red rose mansion burned and johan uh ditched johan ditched the anna disguise at this point he found out whatever he needed to know and he ditched the red rose mansion and it is now uh no more so the red rose mansion is great so as far as johan's trajectory goes with johan we don't know Johan, we have no clue where he's going, right? We do know that at some point in the past, he had been, and this is going to be Johan's timeline, that Johan had been disguised as Anna. We know that. We know that he got the contents of the cassette. And we know that he is privy to the knowledge about Grimmer and Sook. He really doesn't know anything about Anna or Dieter that we know of. He doesn't know about Tenma being there that we know of. He doesn't know about Lungay being there that we know of. He Grimmer and Sook are really the only ones that he's privy to, and he didn't really do much to them. He just was like, eh, right? But we also know that prior to the Red Rose Mansion burning, he sent a letter to Wolf to invite him to the Red Rose Mansion. We know that much. Okay. So as far as Johan's timeline go, after the Red Rose Mansion burns, who knows? Who knows indeed? We know that he killed those guys. This guy sells Anna. There's all those things here. My only thing that I would add to that is we have this alternate timeline. So now we have the timeline of Roberto. So we have Roberto as the lawyer trying to get to Vertiman. We don't know exactly how long that's gone. We know that in the meantime, he knows about Tinma and he knows about Eva and was trying to kill her and then sends the letter to Tinma to get him to come to the Red Rose Mansion as well to search for Eva. Which, at that point, 
with Roberto, we don't know where the timeline goes with him. Because, again, he's like, Johan, after this Red Rose Mansion incident, we don't ever see him again. We don't know where Roberto has gone. So that's a problem. So there's that. Then we have, um, I guess the timeline to bring up here is with the Red Rose Mansion burning, we have Lipsky with uh, Anna and Dieter. Right? We have Lipsky with Anna and Dieter. And we know here that he is with Lunge getting questioned. That is as far as Lipsky's timeline goes. But we know that in the span of here, during three months, he has been with Anna and Dieter while she heals up. And over here was Anna collapsing. With Anna collapsing. Now here's where the here's where the problem goes. Here's where the problem uh, gets to is that Anna collapsing was like three months prior, right? Was three months prior was Anna collapsing, and then the Red, Ro Red Rose Mansion and Lipsky and all that burning was all about the same time, right? I, I guess this is kind of the weird thing here is that what we don't know exactly is this time this three months like we have the idea of the red rose burn the mansion burning everything well ugh, ah, timo was there too so timo saw it too so we have this time period of three months or or them seeing the red rose mansion burning they didn't necessarily have to see it right after it burned at the same time right that didn't necessarily have to happen. So it could have been, there could have been like a three month period where he wasn't going to the Red Rose Mansion because she was, because Anna was healing. And then they discovered the Red Rose Mansion was burned. So we don't exactly, exactly know where the timeline syncs up at. When all this series is said and done, I'll have to do like a whole big thing about the timeline. But we do know that Anna and Dieter had been investigating, had been investigating, and that was before they were investigating before Lunge was investigating, or they were investigating after Lunge had investigated. So Lunge had tore out the wall, found the door, then Lunge had gone back to Germany. He had gone back to Germany and saw Tinma. And in the time that he saw Timma and Germany, Anna, Anna and Dieter were investigating. And then this whole three-month period passed before Lunge could get back to finding Lipsky. So there's that gap in time there, right? So we've got that. Then we've got Timma's timeline. And we know Timma, we, there's been a two-month period. So Timma never went to the Red, he went to the Red Rose Mansion, but it already had burned down. So Timma had got the letter had went to the Red Rose Mansion, which had burned. And then there was a two-month period before we're at now where he's got this Hellblow Hotel where he's basically uh, healing criminals in this underground hotel. But I think he's doing it to find info on Eva because he doesn't have any leads at this point. His leads were at the Red Rose Mansion, which is gone. So he's like, what do I do? He finds out after it burned from Wolf that Eva's with two people. And so it seems like he spent the two months trying to get to this hotel and start gathering info. Because at this point, he's like, and that seems like a long time. You'd be like, well, you'd think that Timo would have some sense of urgency. But he really doesn't have a choice because, you know, he has no leads and Wolf could only tell him what he knew. And so now he's like, well, for two months, he's been trying to find information on Eva. And I'm assuming that he's thinking, well, no news is good news. If Eva had died and Johan had orchestrated it, then Johan would have made it apparent that she had died to Tenma and Tenma would have found out. But now we have this character, Martin, who's coming down here. And Martin, apparently around the time that this letter was sent to Tenma, that's around the time that Eva started with Martin and Wolf knew about it and so we've got the two month period that she's been with him and now Martin is shot and trying to find Tenma. So yeah, 
it, it's just like there's been this two to three month period where all of these things have been happening. And so what we know at this point in the story is that Tinma has this hell blow hotel where he's probably trying to gather intel from the underground to try to figure out where Eva is. And that would be the best place for Tim to do it because Tim is a wanted murderer. What better place to gather information than amongst your own kind, basically, and not, you know, they're not going to question him because he's a wanted murderer because they're wanted too. So that part all makes sense. So that seems fair. We know that Eva had been with Martin but now we don't know what's going on. We know that Martin is shot and possibly dying. We know that Anna and Dieter have gone off. But this is like a month in advance. So one month later, possibly. So this Anna and Dieter's timeline is like in the future at this point. They're still with Lipsky as of now. And as of now, Lunge is after Lipsky to find the info on Bonaparte. So the Anna, Dieter, and Lunge and Lipsky timeline is theoretically in the future. We've not caught up with them yet. We're still in the past with Tinma and Martin and Eva trying to square all this away. There's like a one month gap between what's going on there and what's going to be going on here. So, and as for Johan Roberto, no clue. Not a clue. As for Grimmer, not a clue. Reichwein and Vertiman, not a clue. I There's so much that's still up in the air. I feel like all these timelines are going to converge at some point and all catch up to one another, but that's going to be in the finale. <laughs> that's going to be in the final moments, right? So, oh my God, there's just so much happening. And yeah, I feel like all the timelines are slowly, like they're on different planes right now and they're happening at different times like like while Anna and Dieter were healing up with Lipsky all this crap with Tinma and Eva and them is going down and then we're gonna maybe catch up where Lunge catches up with Tinma and them within the month assuming assuming so that one old man is Bonaparte. I am convinced he's Bonaparte. Lipsky said his parents were alive now I don't think Lipsky was lying so what do we do with that? And we need to talk about this episode. So yeah, honestly, when I saw, when I saw the gun on the ground, when this episode first started, I thought it was, I thought it was the gun that shot, um, Johan in the face. I thought we were going back to the last episode that night with, uh, with Anna shooting him in the face. I thought we were going back to that, but no, we were nice. As if I knew it would turn out like this. So, okay, let's go back and see exactly what happened. Um, we see... Martin aiming the gun at the three men. Three frogs. The number three comes up so many times in this episode. We have the three frogs, three wine glasses, the three guys. I, something's happening. Like these three guys, he like shot the one man and went after the other. I wouldn't have taken the job if I knew it was going to end up like this. Because this guy had like a machine gun and they had all this stuff going after him. And then we see like the... I didn't like it from the start. Okay. And then we see him like in the car, the guy's trying to drive him away. And he's like, I got to get to the hospital. I need a doctor, not a hospital. I got to go to the house, blah, the hell blah hotel. Right. Oh my God. It's like John Wick, right? Tim was like just being in John Wick mode. He's like, get to Dr. Tim quickly. Cause he's got, he's got to give him that damn exposition. Okay. So we go back to him saying, I hate my job. I hate this job. I love this episode title. But yeah, two months ago. So he was told to behave yourself. The person you're bestie is someone you wouldn't be able to see under normal circumstances. So, and baby turns around and looks at him. He says, I'll kill you if you joke around. This has to be Bonaparte because he has to be the one tied up with. Now, Wolf said there were two men that were with, that had dealings with Eva. I'm assuming that he's talking about Bonaparte and Baby, but maybe he's talking about Baby and Martin. I, and he's like, nah, it's fine. I, it's interesting because Martin at first doesn't seem like a character that's just like of any consequence. And then the more we're around him, the more intriguing it gets. Yeah. Okay. So we go into this room, right? The man in the nice suit next to the white cross windows, all the symbolism 
as he goes in. But there's little tiny hints in this in this one scene, the man sitting there, he's standing there like Johan. He's standing there with his hands behind his back, looking out the window like freaking Johan does. His mannerisms, right? They are very similar to Johan's. And he's like, this is man and Martin is my subordinate. And he asks baby to leave. I want to speak with him alone. Yeah. And he's like, okay. The fact that baby says nothing, but does immediately what that man says says volumes he says i will really kill you if you screw something up so the question is are those men that are attacking martin are they babies men are they bonaparte's men i would think that they're babies men but i don't know and then he goes in and shuts the door now there are little tiny clues around this room right going into the room and the man just with with the long silvery hair mm-hmm like, yeah, the, just the Jackson Pollock style painting there. And I know it's not Jackson Pollock. It's kind of impressionist. He's like, can I sit here? Like, Martin is very polite. He just, he, he politely asks where he can sit. He looks at the guy. The guy is like, I, I'm telling you that's Bonaparte standing right freaking there with them glasses on. The, uh, it's him. I just, uh, it's going to drive me crazy not knowing for sure. But then it's the flowers that give it away because he has all the flowers and the, there's all the chairs. They're empty. He says, how long have you been with baby? And he says, I've been with him three years, but I was in jail for eight years for murder. Something like that. You're exemplary when it comes to doing jobs. And he's like, yeah, I just, I'll do anything, any job, except I don't want one involved with women. Because that's why he, that's why he, you know, that was, that was the thing that pulled the trigger for him was seeing the woman that he loved cheat on him. And it reminded me of Cell Block Tango. If you've ever watched Chicago, Chicago, the, Mutal, the musical, um, if you've watched the movie, it is, oh God, what is her name? Catherine Zeta-Jones. Her character plays one that like she found her sister with her husband and she she blacked out she couldn't see a thing and she murdered them and she's like oh it was only after it was only after i was like washing the blood off my hands i knew they were dead or something like that and so his whole story about you know finding a, his lover in bed with another man and then killing them both in cold blood out of jealousy and anger um and the fact that it's like completely changed him to where he's like i just don't want to be involved with women I'm, he has a weakness to that. His heart falls too quickly. He falls too fast in love. And it's like, oh no. And I, I love the, I love the contrast with Martin where he seems like somebody that doesn't care. He seems somebody so nonchalant and like laid back and just eh. But the way he tells his story and the way he doesn't want to be involved with women in cases and the way that he like smells the flower and stuff. He's like a romantic at heart. You just get this idea that he's a very emotional romantic person who was driven by that passion to the extreme and now he's doing everything to avoid it. And the idea that he doesn't drink alcohol because his mom was an alcoholic and he knows that 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 he's subject to that. So he knows he's subject to things and he tries everything possible to avoid those triggers because he's self-aware that those would cause harm to him. And I like his character for it, right? But then damn Eva, she, she does not make this easy for him at all, right? And the guy is like, I'm not picky about my jobs. I just don't want to get involved with women. And he says, well, this job does involve a woman. I swear that's Bonaparte. And Martin's just like, mm, I want you to let, look after a certain woman for a while. And he's like, what an unpleasant job. Pick up a woman from Dusseldorf. And that's basically it. And he's, and I do agree with this man, the employer, that Martin is a good person for this job because he will keep a professional because he doesn't want to be involved with her because he's just like, I don't want to have anything to do with her. Fine. I'll watch her. But you know, any other guy might try to be like, you know, all part of like the guy in the train being like, come on lady, let's do stuff. And he's like, no, I really don't want to. Martin's a good guy, which it's, it's again, he seems like a, he has a good heart, which is so crazy to say because he's murdered someone. But as this series has been telling us through all of these characters, that there's a lot of characters in this series that have done bad things, but that doesn't necessarily make them an irredeemable human. That they've done horrible, horrible things that cannot be taken back, 
that they feel are not forgivable, and they may not be, but that does not mean they are beyond any type of redemption or beyond any type of love or caring because of that. Right? And Martin's a great example. I like his character a lot. I feel for him. I'm like, damn, he had this moment of passion where he made a mistake and it's followed him around. He's trying just to do whatever job's given to him and just not complain anymore. And I'm like, damn. And then Eva, of all people, I can't believe she went with him. She was just like, okay, whatever. Which, granted, and he's taking her to Frankfurt. So that's where they're headed. So they're going to Frankfurt, which is interesting. I don't know what in the world is in Frankfurt. Were Anna and Anna and Dita were, Anna and Dita were in Prague, so they were still back in Prague when all this was going down, supposedly. But yeah, so at first I was like, I was surprised that Eva went with him, but then I thought, no, she wants to go away from Roberto. She knows Roberto's going to kill her, so she's like, let me get away from him and just go with this guy. And what's so fascinating is that you have Roberto who seems like he's kind of acting rogue. Like, a part of him seems like he is acting on Johan's orders, but then another part seems like he's just doing whatever he thinks Johan wants him to do. And then we have this other timeline where we have this one guy working with Baby that's trying to get Eva and get information about Johan from her. So, the, car, the, the organization that wanted to find information on Johan, they, I'm assuming now are being run by Bonaparte. Bonaparte has been chasing down Johan from the beginning, trying to get him and Anna to get back to whatever this experiment is. He has been trying to get a hold of them this whole time. And everything with Anna being used as bait, everything with Johan trying to be um, corralled there as their leader, no, they're doing it all for this Bonaparte guy. He's trying to get them and has been trying to get them. So does that mean that Johan has been trying to like just avoid him this whole time and erase his existence so the Bonaparte guy can't find him? But where does Eva come in at this? Like he thinks that Eva knows something about Johan and can maybe use his bait as well. And he's like, he's not with Roberto. And he's like, I don't think so. And the thing about it, I think the other reason that, that Eva goes with Martin is is that Martin's like, look, I don't like this either. You don't have to come with me if you don't want to. I could say I tried, but it's up to you. And he's, he's surprisingly got really good chemistry with her because he's like everything she could want in a man. He's not bad looking. You know, he's scruffy and rough around the edges, but she kind of likes that because she kind of likes somebody that's, you know, someone she can fix maybe. And then he listens to her conversations. He listens to her story he doesn't, you know, he's like Tinma. He doesn't really drink. And then he, like, carries her bags for her. He's super polite to her. He listens to her. He's not pushy and overbearing with her. She gets to be the dominant one in the relationship. Like, like he's checking off all these boxes with Eva. And throughout this episode, I was like, damn, I'm kind of, like, rooting for this chemistry between them. And then what sealed the deal for me was that when he, like, as a character... He had her like in his arms and took her to the bedroom and she was drunk and he did not take advantage of her. He, he just, he had his, she had her hand on his and he's like, okay, this is a situation, but no, I'm not going to do that to her. I'm going to respect her. Put her hand aside. Bye. That's not a lot to ask. You would think that's not a lot to ask in a situation, but for a lot of time, for a lot of narratives, you don't get that with the character. And so I'm like, Martin, good on you, man. You're one of the good ones. I don't want him to die now. I want him to get to Tinma and explain what's going on. So damn it, you better live. But yeah, she ends up going with him. And when he says, you know, he, he says, what an unpleasant bitch. The way that she shakes her ass and the smell of her perfume pisses me off. And the problem is he, it pisses her off. It pisses him off because he, he's kind of into it, right? But he knows he shouldn't be. And he's like, son of a bitch, I can't be with this lady. It's only going to lead to bad things, but she's making it real hard. <laughs> She was like, she's such a damn tease too. Because at first he's like, what do you, she's like, were well, you going to talk to me on this trip? And he's like, well, okay, do you want to talk about something? No. And then of course, in true Eva fashion, the one thing that I was really sad about is that when she goes past the guy with the liquor, she had stopped drinking the last time we had seen her because she was going to confess and try to save Tinma. But here she relapses. 
and she ends up taking the the liquor from the man from the man and drinking it. And then I think what sold her on Martin was when Martin came back and was like, "You leave her alone," and like beat the shit out of him. She was like, "Okay." Like, a man defending me? What? Like, Eva is... Eva is such a character. And there's so much about Eva that I want to, like, shake her and be like, what are you doing? But she's a very interesting character at her core. And, again, we talk about characters that are monsters. Do they deserve to have love in their life or not? And Eva's a great example of this. Like, on, on a totally different level. Because she's not killed anybody. She's not done anything yet that is, you know, uh, irrid you know that's, like, beyond redemption she dumped Tenma which is bad she like doesn't want to help Tenma which you can be like why but she's not done anything technically illegal not really she's just been such a bitch you know and so but with her character you understand why she's like that and she's very self-destructive and she makes a lot of terrible choices but you get it and for her and Martin as a as a pair it's like these two characters that come from totally different backgrounds and he's done bad and she's kind of, they're both self-aware of their faults and Martin's somebody that's trying to like even though he's like an assassin and a bodyguard he's trying to at least do good in part of his life and Eva is like failing to do that but she recognizes where her faults are and she's thinking about trying she's just not doing a very good job of it and it's like could they make each other better I don't know about that I think Martin would make her better but I don't know if she would make him better. But it's just, it's such a fascinating dynamic. And I want to ship it only because it, I think he would make her a better person. But damn. And the fact that he just is like, okay, leave her alone. Don't lay a finger on her. And then she's like, well, okay. And in that moment, she does look kind of scared of him because she's like, oh, this guy could really hurt me. But he's not going to do it. Hmm. And so then she talks about how his mother must have had a reason to drink. And she's like, I have a reason to drink. And yeah, he's great for her. He listens to her damn story that, that lasts an entire bar scene and goes into like another bar. And then of course, his story is like two sentences. She tells enough story to like last throughout dinner and into another restaurant. His story takes two sentences. He's like, yeah, all that, but I pulled the trigger. You didn't. And didn't just pull the trigger once, but until the gun ran out of bullets. And he says it so clinically and so quietly that it's it's really disturbing the way he is just so calm about what happened. But I feel like with Martin's character, it's him trying to keep himself in check. And he's like, if I get over emotional, then I'm going to jump off that ledge again. And I can't do that. So I have to remain calm and rational for this to work. And I just, I love Martin's character. I really gravitate towards him instantly. It doesn't help that all these people are blondes with blue eyes that I'm instantly, like, all about. So I'm like, how about this? He's like, I was standing alone in the middle of everything. And she's like, you're so stupid. And they just kind of laugh here, and that's when he, like, puts her down and leaves her alone. Says, what an unpleasant job. Mm-hmm. I love it. I, that's one of my favorite, like, halfway points is the heels. So then, yeah, we go to wherever she's going to meet his employer, which is, I'm assuming, Bonaparte, not Baby. I'm assuming it's Bonaparte. And at this point, because Baby hasn't met Eva that we know of. He's met Nina, um, but not Eva. And so whether Eva met with Bonaparte, who I think is Bonaparte, or Baby, we're not sure. But whatever it was, they made a deal with her. Now, what the fudge is the deal? What is the deal? He's a psychologist. If it's Bonaparte, he's a psychologist. So he could probably read her like a book. And what, but what's the point, right? Because what, what is the point? The whole thing was that she got all this money and got dressed up. We don't know the name of the credit card or anything, which is problematic. I wish we would. Grat dressed up. And was told to go to these parties. But the person that she expected was not there. And that scared her. So what the fudge? Right? 
So yeah, she, you know, she says to Martin, she's like, don't get chummy. You're a killer. I don't want to talk to you. And he's like, it's room 1014. And she's like, you're not dressed well enough for this hotel. So just wait here. And so he does for a long time. And he's like, I don't know what the man with the glasses will say, but if she refuses his deal, then I won't have to deal with that woman anymore. And then she comes out and says it wasn't a bad deal. And he said I could use this card as much as I wanted to. So we're going shopping. Okay. I, I don't know what the whole deal is. And it's so frustrating because it's so frustrating because we don't get to see what the deal was. There's so many pockets of this story that are still shrouded in mystery that we, the audience, aren't privy to yet. It's going to come out in the wash, but we don't get to know it yet. And the mangaka is keeping that story away from us. And you know it's going to be a twist, but you're just like, why? Why? Why can't we know? Was it even Bonaparte or a baby in the room? Was it Johan? I don't know. Were they trying to lead Johan to the parties? Because I don't think it's Tenma. I don't feel like she's going to the party to, the thing about it is, I feel like maybe one of two things. Either they're trying to, trying to lure Johan and Roberto to the parties. I think that's what's going on. I think they're trying to lure Roberto and Johan to the parties, mainly Johan so that they can catch him and for whatever their purpose is. And so they're using her as bait. They're like, you're going to be bait to come to these parties, show up and look pretty, and see if they show up. And then we'll spring the trap and catch them. That, right? Um, I think that that's what the case is. Because then you have, if it was Tinma that they were trying to lure, why, why would Bonaparte care? I don't think Bonaparte even really knows about Tinma. I think Tinma's more of Johan's case. Than anything, I don't think Bonaparte cares about Tim at this point. I think that he's mainly wanting to use Eva as bait because he knows Roberto is trying to get to her, and that's how Wolf found out about all of this. And then he told Tinma. So when Martin was shot, did they go to a party and Johan and Roberto were there? We don't know. We aren't told yet, right? I will say the green dress looks really pretty on Eva. Green is her color. It also, you know, green with envy. Uh, it has a very, like, a snake-like Medusa tone to it. And Martin's just like... And Martin looks over at her, but then he yawns. So it's like you can't really tell what he's thinking or if he is attracted to her or whatnot. But he gets stuck carrying all her shit, right? She gets her hair done, everything. And then she's like, you need a suit. She should have gave him a blue suit. I don't think he looks good in gray. And, I, and the tie doesn't suit him. But she gets in the tie because it looks like the one that she got Tenma. Uh-huh. She just, even when she has a chance, she can't let it go. Even when there's a chance for her to maybe develop some sort of relationship with anybody else, it always goes back to Tenma. She's so hung up on him. And it's crazy. Right? It's absolutely crazy. And so, yeah, he puts a suit on everything. And then she tries to get him to like, she's like, you need to look like a bodyguard. You need to not look like, but you need to look like my escort, not just a bodyguard. So she's trying to like, Eva, I have a feeling, is knowing that she has to bring Martin to these dinner parties and he has to look like her guest, not like a bodyguard, so that it doesn't let on that I'm sure that part of what Bonaparte told her was that, and again, I'm assuming this is Bonaparte. I could be wrong. It might not be him. I'm just, in my mind, that seems like him. But whoever this clientele is, I feel like he told her that she has to appear as a guest. He's probably like, you know, being a psychologist, if that's who we think it is, which I'm convinced it is. Um, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, aka with Martin. But whoever the clientele is, I'm assuming that they told her, they're like, we want you to go to these parties you're used to it. You're the daughter of a doctor. Go to these parties. Dress up. Buy lots of fancy things. Live your life how you lived it before everything went to hell. And all you have to do is go to the parties with this guy. Make him seem like he's your escort, not your bodyguard. And then if whoever shows up, I'm assuming it's either Johan or Tinma. I'm assuming it's Johan. When they show up, 
then you let us know and we'll spring the trap. Right? That's all you need to do. You just need to stand there and look pretty. Right? And so I feel that now that she knows that, she's trying to, because before she didn't care with Martin. When they went to the first restaurant, she was drinking and everything. She didn't care how he talked. She didn't care how he ate, whatever. But now that she has to go to these parties, she is acting like it's more of a big deal. So she's making him dress up. She's making him eat properly. She's making him use etiquette. She's making him like, you know, don't talk while you're eating and stuff like that. Like she's trying to get him to where he can blend in better at those situations. And then she says, this is my true form. Eva Heinemann just returned to where she belongs. But that's a lie too. She says that the, the woman that's an alcoholic is a lie just as much as the woman that's the doctor's daughter is a lie too. And it just seems like that Eva's just having an identity crisis. Like everyone else in this damn series. She doesn't know who she is. She doesn't like the labels that have been presented to her name. And her name is something so important. She's Eva Heinemann. She is the doctor's daughter. She's got all of this prestige and everything tied up with her name. Like everybody else in this damn series. And so she is having a crisis because nothing seems to fit who she is. None of the labels fit how she actually is and she doesn't know how to deal with it right but she thinks that she does and then she's like all i that was a job given to me to attend several parties that's it and he's like well that sounds like a fun job and she's like you're coming with me you have to escort me as a gentleman and he's like well this is unpleasant so yeah my i'm convinced that she's just being used as bait to go to these parties over and over again in the hopes that johan is going to show up trying to find her and kill her. So she's basically just going to a party, expecting to meet her death every time, and then it doesn't happen. She's like, oh, thank God I got out of this alive. And I think that when Martin gets shot is when they went to a party that Roberto and then happened to be there. I could be wrong. Maybe we'll find out next episode, or maybe we won't. Maybe I'll go to see what Rudy's been doing the last 20 episodes, you know? Oh my God. But yeah, there's a lot of things with this scene, right? The three glasses cheering seems like the three frogs and the memories at the back at the original, um, back at the original Red Rose Mansion. All the foods laid out there. There's the vines. Everybody's just, it looks like they're all from another country because he said he couldn't understand what they were talking about. Yeah, this all seems a bit weird. And he's like, how does it feel to be back on home ground? And when he looks over at her, she's not happy. She just immediately goes and he's like, oh. And they try to offer him something and he's like, no, I don't drink. But she immediately goes looking for something and doesn't find what she was looking for. Because Martin's like, I don't understand. All these people look like they all are laughing and it's the same thing. And he's like, I don't understand. What's so funny? What are all these people talking about? Yeah. And he's like, is it the weather? Is it stocks? I can't even tell what language they're speaking. Oh, it's creepy. They all have like the same face. And then he says that he feels sick. So he goes outside to smoke. And that's when she finds me. And she's like, let's go. We're leaving. And he's like, he wasn't at this party. My job is done. And then she says, take me away from here. I don't care where. Just take me away from here and the way that she's trembling she's like i didn't see the guy that i was supposed to now let's go let's get out of here i don't want to be here anymore and there's something so ominous and terrifying about the way that she does it like it's it's the most eva is has the biggest poker face throughout all of this and she's being so subtle but you can tell she is terrified because she probably thinks she's gonna die at any moment she's like when this job's done i'm probably gonna die because i'm just being used until i weed out whoever is coming after me she's like and then I'm probably gonna die so the question is is she dead did she end up dying we don't know but yeah they end up going to the bar and he's like at the time I didn't know why this woman's hand was trembling but we find out later I'm assuming and she's like my yeah, life used to be like that and my I thought the real me would come back but I don't there's no place for me no matter where I go I thought it'd be better if I had been staying a mess and getting killed by Roberto in Dusseldorf. 
I thought it'd be better if I died as the well-dressed Eva Heinemann. So yeah, she's fully expecting that whenever whoever's found there, she's going to die because she's like an accomplice and she's a witness. And so they're just using her. And she's like, well, I didn't know if I wanted to die as an alcoholic by Roberto or die at these people's hands all dressed up and, and pretty. So but she's like, I don't want to die in any situation. So and then, yeah, my habits come out. And that's when... That's when Martin says, as I love it, it slowly gets smaller and smaller. And he's like, I thought to myself, I wanted to protect this woman. Yep. Ah, and like, just like Martin decides, he's like, I don't like this job. I don't have to do, and he doesn't have to protect her. All he has to do is escort her. I mean, he's, he's technically her body job, body guard, and that's kind of protecting her. But, but yeah, he doesn't have to. Not necessarily. But but he wanted to. It wasn't just a job anymore. I mean, he's supposed to protect her, so I guess he'd get in trouble with Baby if he didn't. But it's not just a job anymore and a duty that he has. Now he wants to protect her because it's just him wanting to protect her. Because he sees her vulnerable, right? He sees her vulnerable and sees the true Eva, her true form. I'm shipping them! Damn it, I'm shipping Martin and Eva, and I, I just need Martin to find Tim and be like, Look, can I have your blessing to be with Eva? And Tim will be like, take her and go. <laughs> Tim will be like, please take her. Yes, go right ahead. Because Tim doesn't want to be with her. Oh my God. But yeah, and so then we fade to black and that's when we have the shootout, right? Between them. But we don't know where it's happening. We don't know the situation. He's wearing like the same clothes he was before. But we don't know exactly what the deal is. Like, why is he there? What's going on? And then he's back saying that he has to find Tinma. I've got to tell him. And then he brings out the damn necktie with the blood on his hands. Yeah. If I didn't have something like this, I wouldn't have had to go to a place like that. I wouldn't have had... To see something so terrifying. Well, what'd you see? Tell us more. Tell us more. I, he better make it to the Tinma and tell him what happened. Damn it. Son of a bitch. You better make it. Come on now. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I like Martin's character a lot. I'm super intrigued to see what all he saw. What ended up happening. Is Eva being used by Bonaparte to try to find Johan? Tim is running an underground hospital trying to gather information. He's basically become Mori from Bungo Stray Dogs. Oh my god, he's become Mori from Bungo Stray Dogs! Tinma has become the doctor trying to find information from the underground. Ah! Ah! Except he doesn't have an Elise. Oh my god. So yeah, I, th this whole timeline, I came into this episode thinking we were going to get more with Lungi and Lipsky. No, they're off in another timeline at this point. But I want to know what happened, what happened that is so terrifying to Martin. And is Eva dead? What is going on? The show it's building up this damn mystery and I want answers and I know I'm going to have to wait till the end of the series to get answers, but you son of a bitch monster, you did it again. You got me gal. So please don't confirm or deconfirm if it's Bonaparte or not. I'll find out. Please don't tell me, <laughs> but um, we'll find out hopefully maybe next episode or maybe not. But in any case, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. But yeah, I'm going to have to make sure to get that notebook and I don't know how long I'm going to wait before I watch the next episode of Monster. Bye!